Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, once again to the NORL uh, F1 2017 Championship. For the final time this season, it is Abu Dhabi. The driver's title has been decided last time out. If you missed that, it was KB Killazone who took the title in Brazil. But um, there are still many, many uh, driver battles to be discussed over the circuit. We have the battle for third, fourth and fifth still raging on. The battle for sixth and seventh and eighth is currently ongoing. Throw in ninth in there too. Uh, you have pretty much everywhere from 10th down to 14th and 15th, 16th, 17th. Pretty much every battle is still going on for position other than number one. So although the championship has been decided, uh, things are going again. I'm joined again once again by NORL founder Valerio Campagnari. Welcome to the box for another afternoon, Val. Hi, Toby. Hello, everyone. Yeah, final race of the season, always a special moment. You know, we have been racing for 20 weeks. Uh, started i believe on the 25th of september so that's five months precisely today and uh yeah those drivers has been through so many different scenarios so many different races and so many different tests and the last race of the season is always a special moment and uh, as you said uh, still many championship positions to be decided and uh, um, even the, if the championship has been decided already in terms of P1 with KB winning the championship in Brazil last Sunday, um, I'm sure those drivers is gonna, are going to be flat out today to have some fun. Final race of the season, as I said, so we're going to see some good action, I'm pretty sure. So we're joined in the box there by a driver who's currently going to be competing in the race, but opted not to take qualifying. Going to give us a little bit of insight into these qualifying sessions so we can figure out what exactly is the plan for these 12 minutes throughout these sessions. So we've got Nibbler 331 with us in the chat today. Hello Nibbler, how are you doing today? I'm pretty good this morning in Australia, of course, um, but yeah, I'm doing pretty good. So just walk us through when you come usually. Uh, sorry Val, I'll let you go on that one actually. No, I'm just gonna say that uh, it's great to have Nibble in in the in in the chat tonight before before he actually takes to the track for the race. Uh, quite a different scenario for us of uh, being joined by an actual driver. Of course, I've been racing for so many races this season, but uh, yeah, once I moved to commentary, I I never uh, get into the races again. Uh, and it could be interesting for us as well because uh, Nib could provide us with. Uh, yeah, you know, at least some weather forecast, although it should be a dry race in the desert tonight. So and I can confirm I will be racing, because it's not going to rain. <laughs> That's good to hear from Nibbler. So just quickly, Nib, uh, walk us through in this session, what's, what's usually the plan? Is it just a case of loading the setup and trying to get as many laps nailed together, or do you prefer to do it yeah. one lap after another or prefer to go back in the pits between laps? How, how does the session usually go for you? Um, usually just get laid up set up as quickly as I can and then just do one round on each set of tyres unless I make a mistake on that one I'll go for another lap. So the qualifying session is literally um, track dependent obviously it, qualifying not as important here as it is at say some other tracks we've been to recently KB Killazone sitting on provisional boulder uh, currently a second exactly a second ahead of Norfolk Blue looking to um, be moving along just pointing our attention to the live chat we have Kevin Jacobs in there saying he wish he could be at the race and says hello to everyone shame we don't have Kevin Jacobs racing with us today but he is at other commitments so um, he will probably join us again for next season or the historic season but will not be competing in the final so just throwing to Nib again, um, going into turn one, you're going to be going out for the final time. Is it a case of letting your hair down and just having a little bit of fun today? Because of course, you are still in a battle for championship position. You're still fighting um, in the 10th to... Um, need we just find it? Oh, you're still fighting with 10th, 11th, uh, 12th and so on and so forth. So are you still going to be a little bit careful today or is it just a case of having as much fun as you can for one last time. Uh, with my pretty rubbish pace, I'll be trying to have as much fun as I possibly can today. And I'd uh, just like to mention that Blizzard just, just went out uh, second, about three tenths off KB. Yeah, very close at the front in Blizzard again. Of course, he's Blizzard battling with Alan J. Spencer 
uh, for that spot for sixth place. I think that's the best he can achieve today is, is securing that sixth place from Callum J. Spencer, who's dropped off a little bit of form. Uh, we've been hearing a little few things, Val will point that to you, uh, a few things that we might be losing a few drivers to other series at the end of this series. You know, people starting to grow their wings, fly the nest, explore different avenues and stuff. How is it when you see drivers coming and going from your series? Well, you know, uh, I've known many of these drivers so, for so many years. Um, Ragno is one of them. We have been racing together since the very first few days uh, when I started racing, actually. I mean, I, I've, been, I've been there since the very first season in 2010, of course. He joined in 2012 when he won the championship. So, uh, but yeah, talking of drivers, as you mentioned, like Callum, uh, is going to move to PC for better sim racing, etc. Uh, it's, you know, it's kind of sad because those drivers are great, great friends and I've been knowing them for so many, many years. But uh, that's life, you know, uh, we've got people joining, you've got people leaving. And of course, we always try to, to fill the vacancies that open up. Uh, with the best drivers possible and uh, this is gonna be the case for next year as well uh, as it has been the case in past seasons we're gonna run pre-season tests uh, before the, the 2018 season starts and uh, so we're gonna try to have the best best possible driver lineup for when we start next season in Australia for 2018 of course it's the last race we're gonna have the pleasure of on this game without a halo so we got to take the most advantage as we can for that one. Oh, big crash for Galactic Skull 2. He's just had a huge crash, and I'm very surprised he hasn't DNF. But the way he's just doing donuts, I don't think his quality session has gone the way he wants it to. So that is... I'll be is... entertaining for the crowd. He's <laughs> <laughs> practicing a little bit for after the final lap. Uh, so we got three more minutes of Nibbler's company, so... Anything you'd like to throw out there, Niblo? I'll give commentating a little go for the rest of the session. The, the mic's all yours. I'd definitely say that one thing to look out for is the old, good old alternate strategy this race. The one stop is definitely achievable. Uh, it is a bit of a stretch going from super softs to ultra softs though. Um, but definitely look out for the Shazza with the beautiful alternate strategy that he always manages to pull off. As we know, now go on board, who shall we? We'll go on board KO, KB, which is going on his outlap. Quick little mention, Cliffy's going out on the super soft tyres for his final one, so it'll be interesting to see whereabouts he can get. Yeah, Cliffy going out on the super soft tyres, he's only completed a single lap so far, and I believe the end of that lap was coming into the pits as well, so his lap, he hasn't set a provisional bank for lap yet, so we're still yet to see uh, Cliffy's pace, and obviously he thinks, oh, I mean, with the time he's got left, he's got to do a representative lap on them super softs, or he's, he's just got no time to get back to the pits and go out again. Blizzard's going out for another lap, we have Norfolk out on another lap as well, going to try and prove on that one. Uh, Ragnar out on a lap, as is uh, Cliffy on his out lap. The rest of the guys in the pits, and I think they're running out of time to get back on circuit. It's about a 1 minute 40 uh, for your out lap, considering you got all the pit lane to navigate and things as well. Uh, but people are getting ready for the final runs of the day, Val. And um, it looks like it could be another KB killer zone pole position, but of course we've got Blizzard out there looking to take it away from him again. Yeah, you know, the guys have got nothing to lose. He won the championship last Sunday in Brazil, so he can go flat out. Nothing to lose, as I said. He's going to give it all just to have fun one more time this season. Uh, yeah, you mentioned last time we see those cars without the halo. And uh, so, yeah, we, we're just going to save all, all the action we can on the track. And I'm sure the, driver has, the drivers are going to do the very same. And uh, yeah, I'm going to follow closely the start uh, from our Red Bull driver's Nibbler because, you know, he's going to have good company at the back of the, of the grid like David, probably Ragno, all aggressive drivers. We do not have KLC on the grid, so probably things are going to be less chaotic maybe That's at the start. That's very aggressive driver. <laughs> <laughs> no beef in the commentary room. You gotta remain professional. <laughs> 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 so KLC 
earning himself quite the reputation in this league already uh, for all the wrong reasons, isn't competing either today. Uh, flicking back into the live chat, we have Kevin Jacobs once again saying he has an announcement uh, for after the race. Um, AB3 tests up on his hand, that's impressive. We'll keep an eye on him coming around the final corner. What is he going to be able to do across the line? And wow, what a time from KB Killer Zone. Eight tenths clear of Blizzard. We have Cliffy um, in Sector 3 as well. We have Yellow Flags. I think that's just of KB Killer Zone retiring. The transfer is there. How is Blizzard getting along? Where is Blizzard on the circuit? We'll have to keep an eye on him and see what his sector time will be. Will it give us an update? So he's very close. So, uh, here, Clippy is coming up to the, um, underneath the glowing lights of the beautiful Abu Dhabi building. Let's see how close he can get. He could easily, uh, be the highest starting super soft driver today, which could really give him an opportunity to go at it with the ultra soft drivers. He's coming into the final sector now. We'll keep our eyes on Clippy, because this could be quite detrimental, uh, for the race. So, coming up to the final corner is Clippy in the Williams for one last time. Around the final corner, he'd come. Where will he put that super soft fitted Williams? He's going to put it P3, and that's a pretty respectable time for the super soft. And he's going to be mixing it with the top two today. We'll keep our eye on Blizzard, as he's going to be the next driver of interest to get to the end of the line. And we'll see, can he snatch that pole position away? The two Ferraris running in tandem, but it looked like Norfolk backed off his first attempt of a lap. So all the pressure on Norfolk to get this lap absolutely spot on in the final sector. He's trying to trail Blizzard and maybe pick up a few of his racing lines coming into the final corner blizzard goes a little bit wide but manages to get it to the apex and oh he's not improved as he decided to uh definitely abandon that but norfolk blue snatches p3 away from cliffy and it's uh ultra soft Ch one two three chaza yeah we've got to keep our eye on chaza because he could be quite detrimental he swapped back to the super soft yeah he's so lots of cars off in the final corner luckily he doesn't have to slow down and p6 for chaza the man who came so close to winning the championship but just did not and there you go there's your grid uh, you can see that on your screen but i'm going to take this time to thank nibbler for his insights into the race today and we we wish you the best of luck nib thank you it's been a pleasure to be in the box and also watch out because it's quite hard to overtake you so hopefully no loss of breath for you this race so uh, <laughs> we're we're hoping race, give us something to shout about and uh, we'll see you again next time i'll try all right bye 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 bye. So that was Nibbler three three one in the box for us for qualifying this weekend. He's gonna go hop back into his own party and get ready uh, for the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. Val, we're gonna get ready for the final time this season, and it's always an emotional time to see another one of your seasons come to a close, another successful season. Yeah, it has been definitely a successful season. As I mentioned before, probably. The, the most thrilling one, the most closely forward at the front, definitely. We had so many drivers winning races, so many changing the lead of the championship. Quick word to, to, to highlight uh, KB's pole position, quite a dominant time, so congrats to him. Uh, he definitely won to round off this season in style. And, um, but yeah, uh, uh, congrats to Nib as well, because the, the way he could be in the commentary booth with us and then be focused for for the race you know going back into the car being focused 100 percent to start a race is quite remarkable i'm not sure i could do the same uh <laughs> so but yeah it's gonna be an interesting race uh and finally finally a dry one so it's gonna be a bit easier for us to understand what's going on with, on the track so we are getting ready for the warm-up lap for the final time this season and uh, before the guys take a break and get ready to do it all again, Ragnar almost hits Blizzard immediately. Uh, one thing to point, it was a dominant lap time, you're right, from Blizzard. But, however, at the same time, Blizzard was, as Nibbler pointed out before he left, only a tenth down when he came into the final sector. He's obviously messed up the final sector and abandoned that lap. But I think Blizzard definitely has the pace to match KB today just got the lap wrong. Norfolk, honorable mention up in P3, could be his last race in this series before he decides to move on. So we wish Norfolk the best of luck and maybe a final podium in an NORL for the Australian Cliffy, looking to get some experience to go hammer and tong with KB Killerzone for next season. Looking to buckle up and Maverick will start P5. P6, he's the man who almost won the championship but came so close but so far in Chazza. It uh, really showed signs of improvement from F1 2016, so he's really done well to be in that title fight this time around. Newcomer Oli Flavel will line up in P7 in the Force India, showing a little bit of 
um, flashes of brilliance earlier this season from when he joined, but uh, doesn't seem to have the pace um, to the other guys at the front around here. Anil Tanovic, uh, loyal, faithful man who's been with us for a long time, will line up in P8 ahead of Ragnar, who's currently miles ahead of anybody on the warm-out lap, uh, maybe enjoying uh, what it's like to be up in first place for a change, as it's been a little while for Paul Ragnar. Uh, P10, we'll see another man that we believe may be leaving the series at the end of this season, uh, Callum Spencer. We'll hear if he has a good final race, if he decides to leave Galactic School 2 in P11, a man who won recently won his first ever NORL race in the uh, NORL Formula C series on Project Cars, so congratulations to him, and maybe he can try bring some of that talent over into the F1 game. Dafid will line up in P12, the Welshman who's been known for his very aggressive and attacking defending, but fair, all is fair in love and war, and hasn't received any complaints about it, but I expect he'll keep going the same. And lining up in last and 13th place, low turnout today, but 13th and last is the man who we just had in the comms booth, Dibbler331, who chose not to qualify, but there is your grid as we get ready to line up for one last time. Lovely look through the whole field, and uh, yeah, yeah, as you mentioned, Blizzard is really, really fast, came really close to beat KB's time, and Norfolk is another driver who is really fast driving with no assists, and Cliffy as well, has won races this season, Chata as well, Maverick as well, so we, the top six, uh, it's anyone's game, you know, uh, they can all win this race, so it's gonna be thrilling. This is an absolutely beautiful camera angle we're seeing of the cars lining up and such a fitting image to the final season. But here we go then for the final time in NORF1 2017. It's lights out and away we go. Who's got the best start? It looks like KB Kills and actually managed to start very well and has got a pretty good car and um, pretty much a free white start in the background. Look at that, Cliffy getting one up the inside of North but Blue almost immediately. That's going to allow Maverick to have a little look and try and get involved in this battle, trying to go around the Australia. Not going to happen on this occasion. KB Kills gets away well and it looks like Maverick is going to try to go for the attack because North Blue goes defensive and very early on the brakes is going to allow Maverick to swoop on the outside, which gives him the inside of the next corner. Job done for Maverick unless Norfolk has anything to say at the inside. No, he doesn't. We have a yellow flag because we've had a big accident in the background. And that's Callum Spencer being spun around. An early lap victim. I think he came into contact with the two Toro Rosso boys. Uh, but other than Callum Spencer, a reasonably clean start, Bill. Yeah, I was focusing at the back of the grid. And as you mentioned, Callum uh, got in a tangle with the two Toro Rossos uh, after being squeezed by Ragnar on the apex of that chicane before the airpin. So maybe a bit of a hold there from Ragnar not looking enough into his mirrors. Uh, but the, the battle with the, with, with, between the two Toro Rossos is trailing and Nibble is taking benefit from that because with a bigger team, Red Bull is now trying to make a double overtake. Almost gets it done on the both of them, but let's Daffid get away. Daffid leaves now. Now the Red Bull will split the two Toro Rossos. Got score two. Won't be happy that he is the Toro Rosso that fell out on that one. But there you go. Norfolk has lost five positions from his starting position. The really a tough start for a man who could have taken one last podium here today. Just didn't come to fruits for him. But he's got another 27 laps to rectify that. And anything can happen, of course. Safety cars could happen if there's a big enough crash. There's pit stops. There's a lot of things to consider. Uh, so it's not all over for Norfolk, but it's just become a lot harder than it originally was. Uh, closest battle on track right now appears to be the battle between Blizzard and KB Killerson at two tenths of a second. We have Nibbler coming into the pits then. So did Nibbler take damage? We'll watch eagerly on board with this onboard camera and see if that is indeed a front nose change for the Red Bull. Is it going to be? Yes, it is. So Nibbler picked off damage on there, goes on to the Ultra Sauce, and the man who opted not to qualify would have expected a little bit of a karma start being at the back of the grid, but it has come worked out the complete opposite way to that belt. Yeah, I, I bet on the on the soft tires. Uh, usually, when you when you start with the harder compound, you maybe want to take it easy at the start, make no mistakes, make sure you do not damage the car because you know your race comes later, uh, so you're just gonna play it safe through the first few laps. Uh, he probably was involved in a, in, a, in a collision. He didn't didn't mean to, uh, so probably not his fault. Uh, quite unfortunate because now with just one lap completed, he's at the very back of the grid. His, his tire strategy is compromised and he's now lost like 23 seconds to the very car in front. Uh, but yeah, uh, KB man maintained the lead. Uh, Blizzard is in P2, uh, Clippy P3. They're quite spread out at the moment. We know this track is probably 
not the best for closing cars closely, uh, following, following car closely, sorry. And uh, but we have quite a couple of decent overtaking spots. Uh, I th I'm thinking of the, the two chicanes, the two big braking after the, the, the back straights uh, with DRS as well. So it is possible to overtake, but it's probably not that easy to follow the cars in front. Uh, we see the pack is quite spread out at the moment, uh, but we have we have Ragnar trailing Norfolk. Uh, Norfolk, as you mentioned, quite a torrid start of the race and dropped five positions. Yeah, I'm not sure we we missed what happened to Norfolk, but it looks like he might have had an incident somewhere. I've been keeping my eye on the Force India battle of Oli Flavel and Anil Tanovic as well, just to make sure they don't give us too accurate a representation of um, Perez and Ocon. And hopefully we don't see these two come together in that style. Norfolk following that trend very closely. Got a very big tank slapper in the final sector. But as you say, Abu Dhabi is a very interesting circuit because on paper, as it's mentioned so many times, it looks like realistically it should be a very good overtaking track. You've got huge straights into chicanes, huge straights into heavy braking zones, hairpins. Theoretically, it should be a very good overtaking track, but the dirty air generated by these cars, and that is a car gone. That's Norfolk Blue has spun. He's got too early on the throttle coming out of the chicane and just spun across the camera, funnily enough and into the wall and he has to three point turn and he will rejoin in p12 and that is not good because that looks like it's for sure definitely a damage from wing as he wiggles the steering wheel to try to get all that dirt he's just picked up off his tires try get on the move again but that was a big slide and uh that's what happens when you're running no assists and you get on that throttle just a fraction too early well yeah exactly sadly we have the two australians at the very back of the pack now but uh, yeah, as you said, that's the price to pay when you drive with no assist, you can be very fast, but as soon as you lose the car, it's just a matter of a fraction of a second, you know, you just lose it and, and you're into the wall and thankfully we have reduced damage, otherwise I believe he would have been missing a wheel on that Ferrari, so good for him, let's see if he does box, if he has damage, he probably does, he's in the pit now. Yeah, both him and Callum Spencer into the pits, as well as Galactic Skull 2 goes very wide out of Turn 1. So we'll see, does McLaren opt for a new front wing? Yes, he does. So McLaren and Ferrari going for those new front wings. So you can watch the bright orange car and the bright red car in the background get a service and away they will go again. What a nightmare start for these two at the back of the grid. Meanwhile, Blizzard has actually started closing in on KB Killer Zone once again. He let him go and the gap expanded over a second, but Blizzard has now just brought the gap back under a second and has DRS for, I believe, the first time this race. So Blizzard trying to match and overcome that pace. And look how much time he gains in the DRS zone. He gained over three tenths in the DRS zone, showing maybe a potential difference in downforce as well for these guys, uh, because it seems KB Killer Zone is stronger in the corners, whereas Blizzard is a lot stronger in the straight lines. You can see just through that um, the chicane complex that Blizzard actually lost them three tenths again immediately. Uh, but the important thing as well, Val, Cliffy is still ex extremely in the pit stop territory. He's keeping within two seconds of these guys, and he's on the first man on the alternate strategy, as Oli Flavel has found himself on the back of one Mercedes of the second place man, Chazza, looking to sell a move on the experienced man. Speaking of alternate strategies, the man who loves the alternate strategy is uh, finding his tyres to be a little bit slower than the Ultrasoft, and that's seeing him gobbled up by the Mercedes customer car of Force India, Bell. Uh, our leading duo, they know each other, they're good friends, and they have been playing pretty smart. They, they didn't slow each other down, they didn't fight in the start, they just made sure to pull away a little bit from the cars behind, uh, especially Maverick, who is on the ultra soft tires, but also, as you, as you mentioned, Flippy and Chaza, they are both on the super softs. They're very fast, so they made sure not to lose time fighting each other. They just filled a little gap, and only now this blizzard is starting to push probably a bit harder, maybe trying to pressurize KB in the lead. But these guys, they, they know what they are doing. They're very, very smart drivers, very clever racers. So, yeah, it's gonna be a battle of nerves at the front, and, and also tires, tire strategy is gonna play a part in the battle for the win, because uh, of the top five cars, we have three on a three on a ultra soft tires and two on a super soft. Uh, so they're gonna obviously race longer, stay on track longer, and uh, and probably try something different at the end of the race. 
So yeah, it's gonna be something to look for. Uh, mind games, but also uh, tire, tire strategy. We're gonna have a, a, a trading trading battle at the front, and finally, finally, as I said before, a dry race. So if we can keep track of all the tire changes, all the pit stops. It's gonna it's gonna make sense for us finally. <laughs> Yeah, of course, we have a yellow flag in sector three, and that is because Ragnar has had a spin, almost reverses across the nose of Daffid, and now finds himself under pressure from a Toro Rosso very quickly. Uh, in another case, it looks like I'm just getting on that throttle too early. See how hard he'll fight Colin McCallister, so that'll give us an indication of his damage, and he just goes straight off and straight across the track again to get back to the pit lane. So a spin for Ragnar sees damage, and he opts to pit and get that damage rep uh, repaired as he gets a five second stop go for speeding into the pit lane just to add a little bit of salt into the wound on that one but look at kb killers are absolutely marching away from blizzard blizzard started an offensive brought it back into one second but all of a sudden kb killers has responded and absolutely drove away all my all meanwhile cliffy has got under two seconds on blizzard so is blizzard having a little bit of issues is he having some graining potentially is his tire life beginning to dwindle because he's losing time to both KB Killers and, and Cliffy finds himself in a little bit of a sandwich that he needs to get himself out of because Cliffy can go longer on these Supersoft Fires. How much longer? We're not sure, but we're pretty sure that he's going to be comfortable in overcutting them if he can keep within at least, I'd say, minimum two seconds is absolutely golden uh, for Cliffy. Staying within a two second gap means he can easily overcut them if he has the pace to do so. Uh, however, um, he's in two seconds and now almost 1.5 away from Blizzard. So Blizzard's struggling just a little bit now and it's the closest gap right now is Oli Flavel still trying to close in on Chazza but whenever he gets close he just seems to lose the rear end and I'm not sure if that is an effect of turbulent air from that Mercedes but he can close in but just can't get himself close enough to pass. Uh, a little bit of a more spread out race than we've seen in recent races so we got a little time to just relax, take things slow, and discuss any potential things maybe concerning the championship, but of course not actually in the race, just to fill these gaps. Uh, so we'll do that, discussing some of the tight. We've still got a lot of battles uh, for the championship still ongoing that we mentioned. The main one is for third place. That's between JD7, Maverick, and Norfolk. JD7 is not attending today, so he will not score any points. Ten points needed by Maverick to overtake him. Um, actually no more than 10 points sorry it's 10 points Norfolk needs to overtake Maverick Maverick will need roughly about 15 points uh, to overtake JD he's in P4 at the moment so that won't be enough and it will just save JD but he'll be happy that he's able to defend from Norfolk because Norfolk needs to finish fifth or better to overtake Maverick and it doesn't look like that's possible for him at the moment though yeah, I mean, a lot of those drivers, they are still, as you said, is still fighting for championship positions. So they're just not going to be out there for a Sunday drive. They're going to push really hard. A shame JD is not in the track. Obviously, the guy has been dominating the first half of the season with with like five victories. And um, yeah, he really didn't uh, show much in the recent races. I mean, he retired from both races in Mexico and Brazil, didn't show up in in, in Austin but uh, yeah the guy is the guy is a really strong driver and uh, and we wish he's gonna come back for for next season and because with drivers like Blizzard and um, and Cliffy joining from the very beginning of the season it could be a, a trading championship fight once again and then from year after year you know uh, cars are different uh, maybe the, the oh. handling and physics of the car is different as well what what just happened Toby? Uh, sorry to cut you off Bob, but Blizzard um, is losing lots of time and Cliffy and Cliffy pretty much did if you remember can cast your mind back to Alonso going over them curbs uh, and that huge thing and got a huge tank slap that almost spun at the car is how much he's closing in on Cliffy and that was almost a very big moment and potentially race ending for Cliffy luckily he held on to it uh, but their battle is underway once again and somehow Chazza has closed into two tenths of a second on Maverick and is now going to go up the inside into the chicane actually so Maverick making a huge mistake there and losing a lot of time to Chazza and Chazza's up into P4 as Carl Spencer picks up a penalty but time to keep our eye on Cliffy I believe Bell. 
Yeah, looks like the, the Ultra Soft drivers are starting to struggle a bit with Tyler. And Maverick is, is making a move on Chaza, he's taking back his position. Brilliant move with, with his, with, in the second DRS zone. We have seen that happening so many times in real life as well. Uh, did you overtake a car in the first DRS zone and then you get overtaken back in the second? So uh, it's probably wiser to, to just use the first DRS zone to, to get closer and closer and then make the move stick at the second DRS zone. Otherwise, you can see what just happened. Uh, uh, Chaz overtook Maverick in the first zone and Maverick overtook him back in the second zone. Uh, Maverick is now gonna head into the pit, so as I said, as I just said, uh, the, the older software probably ran out of, 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 of grip and we have a whole Indian in the pit as well, the solid level. And uh, but Clippy, Clippy is now right, right in the back of, of the Ferrari of Blizzard. He's gonna try to dive on the inside, probably not this time. He's gonna probably take the slipstream on the straight and overtake him at the chicane. Let's see if he plays smart and overtake at the second DRS zone, or if he wants to try and have a go as soon as possible into the very first braking. Let's see, he now takes the slip, the slipstream, DRS open, and let's see the, the speed difference because. Yeah, you see, uh, Blizzard goes defended on the, on the inside and, and Flippy takes the outside, makes the move and the position is his and let's see if the Ferrari can respond, uh, it should have DRS right now uh, but Flippy is going to defend the inside and by the looks of things, oh we have a yellow flag, someone crashed his... It's, it's uh, Red Bull, I believe that is Nibbler in the wall um, and he's lost a big chunk of his front wing so he's had a spin there somewhere but what a battle we've got going on between wow. Flippy and Blizzard right now, side by side through that camera. Phenomenal defense by Cliffy to stop that re-attempt overtake by Blizzard. Great battling. And uh, Cliffy on the super soft tires is up into P2 and making strides on that tire work. And Berkeley maneuvers as well. Those drivers are really front runners, top, top race craft. And, uh, and yeah, you see, that's the way to battle, uh, giving space, respecting each other whether you are into the straight with DRS or into the corners uh, they didn't touch, they didn't crash each other out so that's, that's for everyone to learn uh, especially the younger drivers um, you know, that's the way to do battles and obviously um, by, the look of, by the look of things um, Blizzard is, is, is struggling a bit with, uh, with the tires and we had KB in the pit as well so yeah the, the ultra soft are definitely gone by by lap 10 and uh, and Flippy in the with a with a with a super soft tires is now leading the race yeah just keeping my eye on the likes of Galactic Skull 2 North and Ragnar as well them guys just had a massive trio battle going on into the second chicane it all seems to have sorted itself out with Ragnar coming out on top on that one as Norfolk Blue got a little bit loose and Altanovic now comes out of the pit lane after serving his stop on the soft tyres it's not going to be close between him and Carl Spencer he's pretty clear on that one Oli Plavel trying to chase down um, I believe that's Maverick at the moment yes it is the Rebel of Maverick uh, he has DRS uh, but how much will he be able to close for the second DRS so he's a long way back he can close a lot on, on the braking he can potentially have a crack in the second DRS, so we'll have a look and see what Oli Plavel has up his sleeve, but he's going to have to do it from a long way back, because he's not right up the rear of that Red Bull just yet. The Red Bull has a little bit of distance to separate him from Oli Plavel, but how dare will the Force India be? No, he will not. The Force India decides to save it for another day, uh, and he's pretty much got no overtaking opportunities in this third sector. So he's a little bit out of luck. For that one, he'll next opportunity will be into turn one. Blizzard finally responds with a pit stop, and I feel that might have been just a little bit too late and could cost him because he was out there clearly struggling with how much time he lost. But he's in the pits now, and now it's Cliffy leading from Chazza uh, with a net first place for KB Killzone. Um, KB Killzone easily passed. Look how much time he's he's lost more. He was three seconds behind KB Killzone, uh, so we'll have to see how far the gap is. When he comes out, KB Killers on his clear past the pit lane now, and Blizzard only just leaving the tunnel. So look at that, almost seven seconds. Yeah, oh wow, so seven seconds is the gap now between him and KB Killers. There's a massive amount of time lost by Blizzard just by staying out. He's lost four seconds by staying out a lap on overcooked tie as well. Yeah, he lost a lot of time. Now, just focusing quickly back to all the flavels, gonna probably make a move on Maverick this lap. He obviously has. 
quick a tire we believe although he might have some tire wear at this stage of the race uh, a lot of drivers going on the soft tires uh, they, they surely want to finish the race on that set of tires but there you go all the club making a move on the inside late break really late break actually uh, going deep into the corner but got the position while wow, Maverick tries to respond on the outside uh, Oli Plava gives a bit of a squeeze and maintain the position for the time being. Maverick is gonna try, gonna try with DRS, but Oli covers the inside. Maverick has to go around the outside, light break off the track. I tried a bit too hard, and uh, yeah, the four they got the position. Maverick tried to put up a defense and resist and overtake back, but didn't succeed. So P6 for, for Oli, P7 for Maverick, and now Norfolk had just overtaken Ragnar at the very same spot where Maverick was attempting at then but Norfolk just went deep into the chicane Ragnar is just trying to trail the Ferrari but the Ferrari should be a bit faster should pull away pretty easily although he's losing the back end of the car uh, he's probably going full throttle on those corners and without assist without traction control he's just lighting up the rear pretty much and uh, but yeah He's disappearing into the distance, Ragnar doesn't have the pace to keep up with, with Norfolk. And uh, just a quick mention to him, unfortunately he was in last place, uh, 29 seconds behind uh, P12 Galactic Skull 2, and uh, having quite a torrid race today. Somewhere during all of that, Maverick has found himself passing Oli Flavel once again. So Oli Flavel in wow. the Force India has to do it all again. Meanwhile, Maverick on the offensive on Daffiv in the sister Toro Rosso. We have a yellow flag in sector one. And oh, that is Callum J. Spencer. Awesome. No! Callum J. Spencer's 100% finishing record ends no. in his Callum final NORL race. And that is the safety car deployed. And that is a heart-wrenching way to lose your 100% finishing record. I don't know what happened. Hopefully someone can get on the case and find that out. But he had finished every race he had entered until today, Val, and that is heartbreaking as we find ourselves under safety car. That's a huge shame. One of the most consistent drivers in the field, very clean, very respectful, and as you said, 100% race finishing record so far. Two seasons he did in NRL Formula One. And he finished all the races, every single race up today. Uh, big shame, not, not the way he wanted to round off his Formula One career in, in NRL. Uh, but yeah, you know, that's racing, those things happen. We can blame him for that. Uh, just really unfortunate. And, and we have a safety car at last. I mean, we had huge crashes in past races, also with the, with the rain. And, uh, and yeah, today we have a safety car because it's, it has been a while since we last have a, a safety car. Yeah, it's pretty big for the race as well, because effectively Cliffy and Chazza have just got a free pit stop valve. So they'll find themselves right behind the people they're battling on that alternate tyre strategy battle. Daphiv, Ollie and Anil and Norfolk will pick up another free pit stop as well. But a free pit stop and much younger tyres for Cliffy and Chazza. So that one's going to be interesting on the restart. Very true. Uh, Forcing is doing a double pit stop, serving both Oli Plavla and Anantanovic. And a lot of drivers going on the. Every, every driver, I have to say, going on the, on the soft tyres. They want to have fresh tyres uh, to go to the very end of the race. They want to be, to be sure to be able to push hard, uh, not worry about tyre degradation. We just have Ragnar. Ragnar on the super soft. And we have Anil in the pits, he's, he's rejoining on super soft tyres, so we're just doing the opposite to what I was saying before. Maybe approaching his pit crew now, let's see which tyre is gonna put, he's gonna get on. Uh, soft tyres, so yeah, only Anil and Ragnar on the super soft tyres. And, uh, but the battle of the, the battle for the lead is gonna be thrilling now. Uh, because we're gonna have KB, Blizzard, Cliffy, Chaza, Maverick, all packed up together. And all those five drivers have been race winners so far, and they have terrific pace. They are very clean. They are very respectful. Uh, they're the class of the field, really. So to have a race, a dry race, with all those cars bunch up together, fighting for position, fighting for the race win, that's I can think of a better way to, to finish the season, Toby. Yeah, it's saving grace for Nibbler as well. He was almost 30 seconds off the lead, but unfortunately. Um, he's had a bit of a rough race today, but it's a saving grace. He's back in the race once again. 
but at the expense of Callum Spencer, he'll find himself back competing. And that's a real shame for Callum Spencer, as um, his day is done, his career is done, and that is 100% finishing record out of the window, and that's going to be really painful um, for him to, to do it in his final race, too. Uh, we think it's his final race. Uh, he's been suggesting uh, quite aggressively that this will be his final time out in NORL, but maybe uh, we know how good Val is. He's got a silver tongue. Maybe Val will be able to convince him to stay. We'll have to see. <laughs> but under safety car, it is KB Killerson leading from Blizzard. Both of them pick quite early on, though, remember, from the Moltresoft and have been on the soft tyres for a little while, whereas Cliffy and Chaz are behind them. have had a free pit stop. Maverick up in the mix as well. Dapid. Pretty much everybody got a free pit stop other than the top two. So the top two are going to be on quite worn tyres compared to everybody else. So that will play dividends. If they're trying, if everyone here is planning to go to the end, I know the super soft drivers probably won't make it. But if all the soft runners are trying to go to the end, it is advantage Cliffy at this point. Maybe even be advantage Chazza if he gets the restart he wanted. Uh, well, the restart he wants and um, is able to hang with them. But such a shame. Um, but I mean, in other ways, it, it spiced the race up for us, a safety car. So... Um, there's the silver lining in losing Callum Spencer from the running. Um, it's brought Nibbler back into the race. The man who was 26 seconds off the next car uh, is now finding himself closing up. He's actually driving, I think it's a Sunday drive, just conserving that fuel. There's no rush to get back up there. Uh, we don't actually get to find out. I'm not sure if we find out when the safety car comes in. Uh, I believe we just get the safety car in this lap at the same time as the drivers do. So uh, it could be the end of this lap, could be the end of next lap. Uh, but Nibbler needs to get a move on and catch up to the back of his train because he's still just uh, chilling around, enjoying the sights and sounds of the Abu Dhabi venue, taking a little bit of time to sight. So you don't really get time to look at the views um, when you're racing these cars. But when you, especially when you're commentating like us, Val, uh, the lovely marina there, this lovely building with all these amazing lights on it as that the cars go through. We get a very good um, camera angle through there a lot of the time when we get to say that. And Calum J. Spencer's seen enough and um, he is out of the session, but looks like it could be another lap of safety car, potentially. It is yeah, going to be another so. lap. Safety car lights still on, so we're going to have another safety car lap. Oh, wow, KB almost overtaking the... Cliffy into, into the pits. Sorry to put that, but Cliffy's back into the pits. And he has a penalty too. Why is Cliffy pitting? That penalty is really going to hurt. Why is... A lot of guys pitting again. Galactic School 2 opts to pit once again. The switching back. Are they, yeah, they're probably going to switch to super soft now. Just fuel laps, uh, fuel laps under safety car. They probably think a super soft tires could last the distance until the end of the race. Uh, previous lap we had uh, Oli Flavla and Ragna pitting for new super softs. So they're probably going to try the very same strategy. But uh, with Cliffy picked up a penalty, so that's that's a major setback for his race. Um, it's interesting. Uh, Probably Callum did sacrifice himself to give us a trading second half of the race. <laughs> I'm not sure, but uh, that's looked to be the case. Uh, now it's going to be interesting to see what what Cliff can do from P11. It's quite strange he decided to pit. It was on the same tires as the other leaders. It was maybe I had a good track position. Now he's going to have to overtake so many cars and serve a penalty at the end of the race. That could really be. Uh, his chances of winning the race gone now to the window. Yeah, he had the advantage, so that's really bizarre that he's opted to do that. Now the most, I'd say, the band with the biggest advantage is Chazza up in D3. We're gonna have to try to do something there, no pressure on his shoulders, but I'm sure he wants to get in there and see what he can do. But very, very interesting. And it seems that Cliffy tried to overtake cars to get into the pit lane, and uh, the game didn't like that and penalised him for it but I think Galactic Skull 2 knows how good Cliffy is with these kind of balls. And uh, I think Galactic Skull said, you know what, I'll have a piece of that, why not? I mean, only two people are not going to score points here today, so why not follow the man who's almost guaranteed to get back himself back into the points? It's a good idea from Colin uh, to try. Take a little bit of a look at the Irish uh, from Cliffy. Try, hope some of that, rub, um, that rubs off on him. Safety car's peeled off. Uh, KB Killzone is controlling the pace, so we will get ready to go racing once again. You can enjoy the peace and quiet because soon enough, 
you are going to hear the sound of screaming V6 turbos get going once again. And will it be a clean race start? Here goes KB Killzone. He's decided now is the time to jump. And he's actually been caught out a little bit by Blizzard there. Blizzard almost was able to make the move. Caught napping a little bit, the Irishman. And look at Blizzard, very aggressive on this restart, trying to get past KB Killerzone. We go racing once again in Abu Dhabi after a safety car. And all we come into, thundering into turn one. Does anyone got the move going into turn one? No, but nobody does. We're all single file for the time being. Everyone's punched up once again, though. Advantage Chazza in terms of tire life right now. We'll have to keep an eye on Clippy's progress because, of course, he's got a lot of work to do. Daphne picks up a three-second time penalty for multiple warnings. Blizzard, look at this. Norfolk Blue swerving around in the background. A lot of lock-up smoke almost hits Daphne. Um, going up the inside, he tried to dummy in, but now he's going to go up the inside of the hairpin. Goes Norfolk Blue, job done. Or is it because Daphib trying to hold that on the outside? And you can see in the background as well, Ragnar trying to make a move on Anil Tanovic once again. We go thundering down the straight. We have Cliffy trying to make his first move on Nibbler. Job done. First move gain for Cliffy. We've got Anil Tanovic making a move on Daphib now as well. Gets the move done around the outside. But Daphib comes back from a long way back to try poke his nose at the inside. That compromises him in a little bit against Ragnar. Ragnar has to check up. Or risk losing it from wing. That's going to allow Oli Flavel to have a little bit of a go. And we rush into the chicane for the second time. And this is the battle we've been waiting for. Everyone nice and close together. Oli Flavel on the inside. Ragnar on the outside. Who's got the whip there? Big contact. Oli Flavel hits. And it's just a chain reaction around goes Anil Tanovic. Oli Flavel debates whether he should wait for his teammate after that. Chooses not to. And a big accident caused by too many cars going into a single foul corner, Val. And Cliffy says, thank you very much. He just came full position in one single corner. I was driving on, riding on board with him. I could see all that unfold in front of my very eyes. And uh, I, I, I can see that driver jumping in his seat. He just gone up to P6 uh, with super soft tires. It cleared the, the drivers that were clearly slower than him. And now can go up chasing the drivers who has a similar pace to him. I'm speaking of Norfolk in P5 and more importantly top four. All the cars he has in front now here on a slower tire. So if Cliffy can manage to, to, to save with the tire life and his super softs, he could stand a strong chance to win the race. Uh, although it has a, a five second time penalty, I believe. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's that's something that really helped this race. And now Blizzard is trying to take this lift trim from, from the house of KB Kurzen. Um, let's see if he's gonna try and move in this chicane, probably it's a bit too far. He's gonna try and make a move at the next, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I was just keeping my eye on the Toro Rosso battle as well. The Toro Rosso has been going quite hard on this first part of the lap, and Galactic Gold 2 looks like he's passed up the inside on his teammate, Great Effort by the Toro Rosso. Actually, no, because Dapiv gets to move back once again, and the switchback will now come from Galactic Skull 2 and it's almost a pre abreast situation as Oli Flavel tries to get a little bit involved as well. Oh no, we're not going to see a carbon copy of the last lap, are we? Because almost pre abreast we go into the chicane once again. Galactic Skull 2 pulls ahead as he gets this uh, best late. It's just the late breakers and Oli Flavel tries to get the move done on Daphne. Daphne very determined to keep that Force India behind him. Great defense by Daphne. Loses a position to his teammate but refuses to lose one to the Force India. Almost pre abreast into that chicane. These guys are getting very brave in their fight against each other but yeah great stuff from cliffy to really seize the opportunity there and uh manage to get himself up into p6 that's going to help him and i think that's going to make kb killer zone and blizzard a little bit nervous but i'm i wonder if they they won't be sure about that penalty Oli flavel going around the outside of daffy surely not that's one hell of a move if he can do it looks to go around the outside no pulls back tries to get the switch back instead gets the switch back side by side the battle for the final point goes into turn one once again Oli Flavel on the outside Daphib on the inside banging wheels hand of rage up from Daphib forces Oli Flavel off the track Oli Flavel comes back onto the circuit but has to sit down and get back past um, Daphib once again where's he going to do it because this is getting a little bit red misty because here goes Oli Flavel around the outside no tries to go for the switch back and we've got a safety car deployed and I'm not sure Why? for what reason uh, perhaps some debris on the circuit somewhere but a safety car has been deployed and the racing shuts down once again. Wow, we could pretend there is a man running on the circuit <laughs> because <laughs> I cannot see a clear reason for, for the safety car being deployed. Uh, not sure, not sure. Uh, just checking through the field, but I cannot see anything. I, cannot, I can see a piece of front wing missing from Ragnar's uh, Renault, but uh, otherwise, 
no clear indication why we have a safety car again after after getting no safety car for the last like four or five races when we had big incident now we get a second safety car for apparently no no reason but uh okay we're gonna take it we, we we're gonna see the pack being by the shop again and hopefully we're gonna have another exciting restart as we just had it and uh and cliff is gonna say thank you very much once again because you now you now see the gap reduced from the top five cars and and he still has quicker tire so he was posting sparkle up maybe killers and in blizzard time. into the pits Wow, they're trying they're to respond to Cliffy. Yeah, yeah, they're copying his very strategy. They're gonna probably switch to the super softs. But now Cliffy's gonna have a terrific advantage. Ultra softs. Ultra softs going on both cars. This is interesting. Cliffy has the lead, but oh, a five second wow. penalty. The Ferrari, sorry, Toby, the Ferrari had to double sucks of uh, Norfolk, I, I believe. Yeah, Norfolk had to, to lose a lot of time because he got stuck behind Blizzard. Literally every car apart from the top two is in the pits. And it's such a busy pit lane, you would not believe. And Ayan Altanovic, Oli Plavel do a double stack once again. And look how much time that's cost as they have to get the guys back out to service Ayan Altanovic's car. Everyone going on to ultra soft tyres. Uh, they do have 11 laps to complete. This is very interesting. Sorry, no, they have nine laps to complete. So it's pretty much ultra soft uh, territory and just judging by the style of Cliffy, look how Cliffy's driving he's revving the car on a whole new level which says to me perhaps trying to burn a little bit of fuel on that yes he has almost two and a half laps of spare fuel and he's trying to burn a little bit off during this safety car phase just trying to get the tire there we go the only cars left on super soft tires then are Cliffy and Norfolk out on there so Cliffy has the world against him now, but it's Galactic Skull 2 behind Cliffy. And KB Killerzone has to clear the Scotsman before he can go after Cliffy. Uh, so does Blizzard as well. So uh, Galactic Skull 2 could run a little bit of interference here, though. Wow. Uh, yeah, you mentioned that Galactic Skull was mirroring the, the strategy from Cliffy. And uh, and yeah, he's, he's having a, a, a the race of his, li his life being P2 behind very fast driver and ahead of very fast drivers so it, it's probably gonna be in not so much familiar territory uh, concerning formula one but uh, i'm sure he's gonna enjoy his time there up the front and his tires are relatively new uh but of course as you mentioned everyone pitted for ultra soft tires which doesn't make sense because we just have uh yeah less than 10 laps to go so yeah cliffy uh, he's, he has track position, but uh, uh, with a slower tire, with that time penalty, uh, things are not looking very good for him. He's gonna have to defend from very fast car. Probably he can use the Toro Rosso as a buffer to, you know, gain a bit of time at the restart as KB and Blizzard and Shaza try to overtake uh, Galactic Skull. But um, yeah, it's gonna be very hard for the Williams to build build a significant gap to, uh, to to serve the time penalty at the end of the race without losing position, especially considering the cars behind us got brand new ultra soft tires. So yeah, probably Cliff is out of the equation, but uh, KB, Blizzard, Chaza and, and Maverick, they are all playing for the race win. Dream situation for Cliffy would be KB Killzone gets into a fight with Galactic Skull 2, which allows Blizzard to get into a fight with KB Killerzone, and he's gonna hope that these guys are all gonna battle um, to allow him to get away, but just, you can sense the tension in KB Killerzone's cockpit. If you notice over the course of the Sith call out, he's been looking, um, going up the inside and things of Galactic Skull 2, just trying to psych the Toro Rosso out before we get racing once again, and say, hey mate, I'm coming for you, and you better get out of the way. But like you say, the last red look, here he goes again. Trying to psych the Toro Rosso out by getting alongside him. Just trying to put the, the spikes and the scare on the Scotsman. But we know Scottish people aren't frightened off the road very easily. So we'll be interested in that one to see how it goes. But, of course, it's the end of the season. All is said and done. Everyone's just here for a bit of fun. Galactic Skull 2 could possibly take... I mean, we've seen stranger things happen, Val. But Galactic Skull 2 could take his first podium in the same way Week has taken his first win. 
uh, took his first podium in the F1 series, sorry. Uh, but he took his first win in the NORL series. Why not his first F1 podium as well? I'm sure he'll fight his absolute heart out, and that's what Cliffy is banking on. Yeah, I mean, he has been really dominant in the Formula C race. I mean, I was there on the track with him. I was the one fighting him for that very race win. So I, I, I can tell you, he was very fast on that track uh, uh, last week uh, on, on, on Wednesday when we were racing in, in Alton Park. It was very fast, but uh, yeah, I don't know if we can keep those cars behind today, to be fair. Uh, but it's restart time, I believe. The safety car is heading into the pit lane. Here we go once again. Cliffy decides to get the jump and look how much KB kills him. Wants to get up the inside of Galactic Skull 2 immediately. The job is done in the first corner. But Galactic Skull 2 actually coming back and that's allowed Blizzard to get past KB Killerzone. Look at the little Scotsman fighting his heart out. Now KB Killerzone gets tagged with Blizzard and KB Galactic Skull 2 tries to go around the outside of Blizzard. No room to do it. Hey, contact! Huge contact and he spins out and we've got a multiple chain reaction. We've got Maverick off, Norfolk off. Galactic Skull 2 off, and he just tried to fight, fought too hard, and off the circuit he goes, collecting some cars with him, but really quick, a man who started last is up in P4, Niblo is up into P4, fantastic stuff, but Galactic Skull 2 just went from hero to zero in the space of a couple of corners, well. Wow, I didn't want to jinx it when, when, I, when I said he was probably not going to keep the podium position, but you saw KB try to make a move at the, at the last corner. He probably overtook the Toro Rosso uh, too early, too early. So he got a, uh, an illegal overtake. He had to let him through again, but Blizzard took the chance to, to, to jump them both. And then we had chain reaction, cars hitting each other, cars picking up penalties. We got KB pick, picking up a 3 second time penalty as well. So that could really be a factor. Wow, there is a Force India crashing out. That's Anil, that's Anil. He hit the, the barrier. Wow. Wow. Big My accident. goodness, he was, he was fighting with another car and just went off the track a little bit. That corner is really hard because it goes downhill as soon as you head off, off the track over the curb. It just gets sucked into the barrier. He lost a wheel there. And, and Anil Tanovic uh, is another man that has been really consistent. This season he has retired two times, but I can remember last year uh, uh, Anil and, and Callum were two drivers finishing every single race. So that's not the case today. Look at Chazza going after Nibbler, absolute bumper to bumper stuff. And he now tries to go around the outside into the very early corner. He's going to break very, very late. Try to go all the way around the outside, which gives him the inside for the next corner. Good move by Chazza. Squeezes Niblo out to make sure he can't come back on that one. Ragnar is another big gainer on that restart. Oh, I see that! And he gets tagged by the Force <laughs> India of Oli Flavel. And around he goes, and back to the back of the grid, other than Galactic Skull 2. But that, I was riding on board with Ragnar, and we did hear a little thump. So that was contact between him and Oli Flavel that put him around. And just as we said he was a big gainer, it's all gone again, Val. <laughs> We're jinxing them, Toby. <laughs> <laughs> They're commentators' curse. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Ragnar gave, gave a little bit of a tap at... Uh... Uh, to, to Chaza, uh, the, the previous lap at the airfield, Chaza got sideways. I, I, I thought he, he, he was almost going to spin, but he catched the car, corrected the slide, and kept the position. But now Ragnar, yeah, has dropped it to the very back of the field, has got front wing damage as well, missing the right hand uh, hand plate. Uh, Sad for him because he, he has been having a, a tough season this year, and uh, now picks up a time penalty as well. Uh, of course, 2012 champion. I know this driver is really fast. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes makes mistakes. But uh, in, in the in the project cars Formula C championship, uh, we were mentioning before, he's up there uh, with me fighting for the championship at, and for race wins. So he's a very good driver. He's having a torrid season this year, but that doesn't mean he's a good driver. He knows how to drive those cars. He's just having a bad year overall. Um, is now in the pits, uh, but the, the battle for the lead is really hot enough, Toby. Yeah, I'm watching that. It's absolutely crazy. Three cars are pushing each other along the circuit, and there goes wow. Blizzard. Late move up the inside, but Hairpin tries to catch the Williams napping. The Williams just sees it coming and opens the door so there isn't an accident, but he will retain that position, but I'm sure DRS is going to come into play. Now we've got another safety car, safety wow. car and the racing just wow. as it starts to spark up. Farms down again, and this is very reminiscent of a safety car glitch we had a season, I believe it was in F1 2016 NORL Val, 
at Russia, something like this. It just seems to be infinite safety cars for no reason. There's nothing we can do about this. We're not controlling the safety cars. This is a Codemasters um, item uh, that we seem to be experiencing the glitch, and it's, it is chopping up the racing quite significantly. Uh, and we can only apologize on behalf of Codemasters uh, for what is going on here. The safety car out once again, just as the top three were about to get good and spicy too. Uh, Cliffy, Cliffy has pressed the, the start button, I believe. The AI is in control of this car. It was, oh, now it's back in control. battle for, for the lead of the race. Uh, Cliffy is obviously uh, saying thank you very much, but uh, he still has those five five second time penalties, so uh, even, uh, if, even if the race finishes behind the safety car, he's not going to win it because he's going to drop five seconds back and probably the safety car bunching up the pack would not help him either because yeah. he's going to lose all the time. I think Blizzard is in the hot seat to win this race, isn't he? Because KB Killzone yeah. also has a three second time penalty. But however, I've just been taking a look in the chat off camera there and uh, Anil showing his displeasure, uh, not very happy claims that someone rammed into him and didn't break. And that's what caused him to DNF um, Norfolk complaining of some driving standards too. And we've just seen received announcement in that chat uh, that F1 2018 will be the final season of NORL for Kevin Jacobs. He plans to retire at the end of next season. So one more season of glory potentially for the American, uh, but the Haas driver not attending the final plans to make that his farewell season. And uh, that's a little bit of news we can talk about while we, we get through this seemingly pointless safety car uh, that Codemasters <laughs> are so lovely, uh, be so lovely of them to gift to us. Uh, but a farewell season planned for Kevin Jacobs, who's not attending today, well. The Eyes has been having uh, quite a difficult season this year. Uh, it's been scoring point three times, so pretty pretty good improvement from, from last year, but uh, still not the level he wants. But he joined the Formula C Championship on Project Cars as well, and he's been really competitive there. So maybe, maybe he's, he's going to with Formula 1 after 2018, but hopefully uh, we can retain him for the Project Car Series because he's a really good driver, very fast, very clean. He's a, he's a race driver in real life as well. So, you know, a lot of drivers, like like myself, of course, uh, dropping out from the F1 Championship, but still committing to racing Project Cars, of course, uh, driving simulator, much more realistic. So the cars are probably a bit more fun to drive. And uh, so yeah, that, that could be the case for him as well. Uh, we always try to keep uh, these good drivers in at least one of the series we run. So hopefully that's the case with him as well. But uh, yeah, we're starting lap 25 uh, behind the safety car. So uh, if safety cars pull into the pit lane this lap, we gonna have uh, basically three laps of racing. So it's a really sprint race to the flag. And uh, as you mentioned, Blizzard is in top seat to win this race. Yep, so that is what your situation is. We have a safety car out once again. Cliffy in the lead, but has a five second penalty. Gibby kills an in third, but has a three second penalty. And um, a lot of we, we, the funny thing is, if the finishing order was like this with these gaps, KB Killers, uh, Cliffy would finish dead last, and KB Killers would finish in 10th only. So look at these two battling in the hairpin. I've actually just seen a hand of rage from Blizzard as um, KB Killzone and Blizzard come together in that hairpin. So interesting stuff going on there. Um, it is pretty wild um, how many safety cars we've had. We've got Chazza and Blizzard swapping positions. I'm not sure what's going on there. Chazza seems to have overtaken Blizzard as Blizzard slowed down and is actually letting his AI drive. So maybe that's why uh, that has happened. But Getting ready for racing once again, it will be a free lap sprint and it'll be an absolute miracle if Cliffy can gain five seconds on the pack. It'll be an absolute miracle if KB Killzone can gain three seconds on Blizzard. Did Blizzard drop the P3? Did Blizzard drop the P3? 
And the Lizard, second, I believe, was in P2, wasn't he? I'm not sure what KB Killer Zone's yeah, yeah, doing. He was P2, he, went, he just pressed the, the, I think, the option button, AI controlling his car, and lost the... Yeah, I'm quickly checking the chat now, because we've got someone going on that. Yeah, he's okay. Um, Blizzard is complaining of KB passing under the safety car, and the game has not told KB Killers to return that position. Um, yeah, same goes to Norfolk and Maverick. They're uh, discussing in the chat whether to swap position at the restart, which is going to happen this lap, by the way, because the safety car is pulling in. So, just another glitch in the Codemaster series, and if you've been a fan of the Codemaster series, for as long as we have, you are pretty sure that glitches are... Um, we're more surprised if there isn't any glitches um, with these games, is, is, is the term <laughs> that we've had for some time now. But here we go for a free lap sprint to the finish. And uh, will KV Killerzone give that position back to Blizzard? I doubt it, because he has a penalty and wants to run away from him, but no sportsmanship I don't think going to happen, because it's three laps, three final laps of the season. No point, just, just he just fancies to go and run, doesn't he, really? And we've got Maverick gave that position, I believe, back to Norfolk immediately. So more sportsmanship showing up there uh, from those guys. But KB kills. And obviously, sportsmanship not in his vocabulary on the restart. But look at the run he's got on Cliffy ah. immediately. Is he going to try to go around the outside straight away? Yes, he is. Ble Cliffy tries to be as late on the brakes as he dared. The banging wheels the whole time. Ragnar has been disqualified, I believe, for a second race this Again. season. <laughs> yeah. um, so I'm not sure what's happened to him on that one. But he's been disqualified. And KB kills on is into the lead. Wow, uh, hectic restart, and, and now the, the top three are fighting again. That's very good. We we picked up from where we where we left before. Cliffy, uh, the safety. Oh, wow, my goodness, Cliffy almost hit KB. Uh, wow, how could he survive that? Wow, and uh, yeah, KB is still in the lead. A Blizzard, Blizzard is the one that really wants to overtake them, but he knows he knows he can win this race in penalty. So. Uh, he probably might want to just sit back and watch the two in front of him going battle, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, it's very, very close between all those three cars, and Blizzard just now goes a bit wide, overtakes, overtakes the Williams. What, what, what's what's going on? What, the wow. Problem for Cliffy. The car's yeah. in neutral, now in first. I'm not sure what's happening. He might have some software issues or hardware issues. Looks like something has gone wrong in that Williams. Uh, we're riding on board. And um, is this a signal? Is that a signal of giving up for Cliffy? Oh dear. And that's actually, I think, affected Norfolk Blue, as it might be given a penalty for yellow flags. But uh, just donuts coming from Cliffy now. Um, that's not good, because he could have had, he could have fought for a podium, or at least some points, but he's, he seems to have opted to give up. Is he still doing donuts? Yes, he is. We'll take our attention away from him and try to place it on Norfolk Blue and Galactus Cup 2 and Mavericks. Look at this, both of them just went around the outside of the Toro Rossa. Great stuff. They're following each other around. They're carving the way through the field like a little duo going on here. Great stuff from Norfolk. The two yellow helmets doing a duet around the hairpin now. Norfolk has the inside for the next corner. Not going to happen on that occasion. Chazza somewhere has passed Blizzard. Chazza could win this race. If he can keep ahead of Blizzard, Chazza can win the race now. Oh, and he locks up, and Blizzard goes on the inside, but he's gone super wide. Now Chazza on the outside gets squeezed off the circuit, and Blizzard back up into P2. Does not want to sacrifice this win. That's a little bit aggressive from both parties there, I feel. But Oli Flavel, Nibbler battling straight away. What a try from Nibbler, by the way. Really doing the business, trying to battle up there. Chazza, Oli Flavel, and Nibbler can still all win this race if they can get past that Ferrari. What's happening to the Ferrari? Seems to be struggling massively for pace at the moment. Got himself a little train forming behind him. Maybe some pressure will be relieved as Oli Flavel will try to attack Chazza into this section of the inside, and he actually hits Chazza. Almost follows him off the circuit. Nibbler actually hits Oli Flavel as a checkup kind of and they all checked each other up, and Nibbler off the inside, what a late move, and almost squeezes Oli Flavel into the wall, opportunistic to the absolute maximum for Nibbler, Nibbler can sense a race victory here, I think, something is wrong with Blizzard, he is losing a lot of time to KB Killerzone, he can't keep up with KB Killerzone, and Chazza is breathing down his neck, but the problem is, KB Killerzone is almost three seconds away from these guys, Chazza knows he needs to get past Blizzard, if he wants a chance at winning, because the KB Killzone is driving away, Val. Yeah, that's very true. I mean, those cars fighting each other, just they're just doing 
KB, uh, KB's game because he's gaining time. Gaining time is now 3.5 seconds ahead. So he's clear to win this race now. Blizzard, uh, KB's friend, obviously, is fighting hard with yeah. Chaza, but he's doing his friend a huge favor there. Could this be an organized tactic from them too? It wouldn't be the first time we've seen it this season. Maybe trying to give KB kills on the final race victory, but Chaz is having none of it as he tries to go to the inside. Now tries this to squeeze. Look at these two absolutely stuck together like glue. Holy Flabble might make this a pretty wide situation in a moment. Look at how defensive Blizzard has to go to stop that from happening. Niblo is watching all this unfold in front of him. Who's going to be the victor going into the chicane? Chaz is on the outside. Holy Flabble there too. Chaz gets squeezed off the circuit oh. and Chaz has taken a massive hit and drops down into P5. Wow, I mean, four guys fighting for a position into a very tight corner. That's really, really, I don't know how they did all survive. The bit of wheel banging and we had cars off at the back as well. We have Maverick and Daffid doing battles. And, uh, oh, yeah, sorry we'll to cut you off, but Daffid yeah. has just hit Maverick off the circuit on the final lap. Manages to return. Look at this Toro Rosso battle. We're going to cut back to the lead because KB Killerzone will win the race. Uh, was it Blizzard parking the bus that got him here? A podium for Oli Flavel out of nowhere. Nibla will take P4. Great effort from him to do the work here today. But that battle towards the back of the grid went all the way to the checkered flag. I think um, Daffy and Maverick were side by side across the line. But that is your final race of F1 2017 NORL. And what a crazy one it turned out to be in the end, though. Wow, Chaza will be furious, I'm sure, because he, he could he could smell the race win, and he lost so much time fighting with the Ferrari that, and eventually he dropped he dropped out of the podium as well, and and yeah, I mean, thrilling for us to watch, thrilling for us to commentate. Uh, I'm sure all the people watching did enjoy this race because it was a great way to to end the season. You know, thrilling race, also thanks to the safety car that punched up the field. We we had maybe two too many safety cars today but uh, surely provides very much entertainment and so much action but there it is uh, KB wins did the everybody race, have uh, a penalty according to my screen Val everybody so, picked up yeah, a penalty exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so that wow so even if anyone got past KB kills them would have won it anyway because everyone somehow picked up a penalty but that has been it Val Another successful season in the books. KB Killerzone is your champion. And uh, he takes his final win of the season at the final race of the season. So good effort. But look at that. 13th for fourth to Nibbler. What a great drive by the man who was with us in qualifying. Uh, Calvin Spencer takes his first DNF of the season. We potentially wave goodbye to a few drivers. Uh, but I want to take the time to thank you, Val, for another great season. It's been a thrill to commentate. And I'm sure it's been a thrill to watch. Um, it's been nice having you in the box with me the past couple of races. It's been different, um, but it's been absolutely wild. And uh, that is another successful season down in the history books. And um, I will let you round off with some words you'd like to say about your lovely and uh, thrilling championship. Yeah, it has been a great season. Great race as well. Great, great, to, great way to finish the season. I'm, I'm, I can smell some controversy in the chat and after this race so there might still be something to to discuss after this race but uh you know uh it has been thrilling and uh, it has been great uh the job you're doing as well uh, commentating those races has been great for me joining you in the commentary booth those final three three rounds of the championship and and this is it next year we will be back with f1 2018 uh, 21 races the longest ever in formula one history the longest ever calendar and uh and for us as well at nrl just doing the very same calendar as in real life so it's gonna be interesting it's gonna be thrilling we're gonna have a lot of drivers being very fast fighting for the for the win and for the championship and uh but yeah um stay tuned because uh we're gonna have a lot of news uh in the in before the season starts with with, with pre-season tests we're gonna try to look for new drivers so if you want to join nrl formula one uh, stay tuned on Twitter, on, on Facebook, and on our website. You, you will find all the information. And uh, yeah, we're going to start pre-season tests late summer on F1 2017. And then on F1 2018 when it comes out. Before starting our championship, I believe, by the end of September or the beginning of October, like we did uh, this year. And uh, so it has been great. It has been great. Uh, hopefully, we're going to have more to come in future seasons. And, uh, and I want to thank you very much, Toby, for the job you have been doing. 
I want to thank you for the opportunity, Val. It's been great. So KB Killerzone is your champion. He takes home the trophy. And I'm sure that's going to be a lovely addition to his collection. That has been F1 2017 NORL. That's been your final race of the season. KB Killerzone wins it. Who will be the one to take the victory this time next season? There's only one way to find out, and that is to stay tuned. Until then, that has been Valerio Campagnari, founder of NORL and my lovely co-commentator. I've been Toby Byrne of Gaming Now. That has been NORL F1 2017. Thank you ever so much for watching. And until next time out in Australia, goodbye.